Good evening, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital uh, with a review of the daily trading plan for February 7th, 2012. Starting on page one, we have a bullish quiet market, <clears throat> very favorable for the upside. On an annual basis, we're at 62 out of 100 on uh, weekly RSI 14. That's favorable. That's getting towards the high end of normal. On a 10-day time frame using the 10-day NDX we're at 104 and that's a breakout from the previous 10-day high we have closed higher than the last 10-day high and that's significant because people were willing to hold this market at a price that it couldn't even get to in the last 10 days and that's a very favorable um, indicator for overnight risk uh, Price relative to the 200-day moving average is 7.98%. That is coded green, so that's strong bullish. Slope of the 50-day moving average is at 1.17%. And increasing, that's also coded green, very bullish. When they're coded green, that means it's uh, among the most powerful readings for that indicator in the last six months. So that's exceptionally strong. ADX uh, 14, uh, right around 30, so strongly trending market. We can be overbought for a long period of time in a bull market, so uh, even though it shows red and it's overbought, that still is actually a favorable indicator. Uh, ATR percentage at 1.03% actually got quieter today than it was yesterday, and the quiet conditions is very favorable for the long side. <coughs> uh, next section, we're looking at the gap stat. I'm going to take a look at the last 30 days. 15 times in the last 30 days, uh, the market has gapped down. Uh, one of those 15 days, the gap down then went on to close lower and it turned in a minus 0.41% for that day. 14 out of 15 times uh, that, it, that the market has gapped down, it has reversed to close higher. It did that again today. That's the third day in a row. The average uh, improvement from the open has been 0.51%. Uh, so gap downs we're treating as gap and reverse uh, until proven otherwise. That's the strong pattern right now. Fifteen times the market has gapped up in the last 30 trading days. Nine of those times it has reversed to close lower for an average follow through of 0.47%. Six of those 15 times the gap up has continued to gain for an average follow through of 0.36%. So there's a very clear distinction in the pattern of behavior based on the direction of the gap. Gap downs have been reliably reversing and closing higher during this bull. Uh, and gap gap ups, though, have been uh, have been failures. So if we see tomorrow a gap up, uh, we'll be cautious about uh, preserving the profits that we've been making this week. 10-day NDX, you can see, is overbought, continues to be overbought in a bull. No, nothing unusual there. The overreaction and channeling systems uh, are no signals being fired. You can see the daily pivots has increased to 134.48 in SPY. Volatility uh, is uh, flattening out here uh, right around that 1%, so we're well within the quiet range. ADX continuing to march northward. It's already beginning to get into nosebleed territory for the S&P. Uh, 35 is the upper limit of what would be considered uh, normally strong. After that, it gets starting to be an uh, irrationally strong trend. Uh, next table summarizes uh, min pain and max pain. The min pains are the ones that have lost least on a percentage basis compared to their peers uh, from the 10-day high. The strength winners have been Disney, Home Depot, Cisco, Coke, and McDonald's. Among the ETFs, uh, oil and gas exploration, Japan, energy, Germany, and uh, I think that's pharmaceuticals. It may be discretionary. 10-day uh, max pains, uh, where I hang out. These are the ones that have lost the most on a percent basis from the 10-day high compared to their peer groups. Uh, among the Dow, the losers have been uh, Procter & Gamble, Pfizer, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, and Chevron. Among the ETFs, it's the VIX, natural gas, uh, long bonds, uh, oil miners, and oil. We have a triple screen pattern still in Merck under the large caps. We have a channeling signal in TLT, the long bond. Under For the auto framer, uh, we have 
uh, more than two to one risk to reward ratios for these symbols, the VIX, the long bond, and Procter and & Gamble. And that's based on a breakout from yesterday's, or today, excuse me, breakout of today's high using today's low as the uh, initial stop, and then a retest of the 10-day high. We'll see that those are all better than two to one reward to risk ratios. The VIX, in fact, is up around six to one. So for swing traders, those may be of interest. Uh, the, the Dow 30 summary. Uh, the big percent losers today, Verizon, Kraft, J.P. Morgan, Alcoa, and Bank of America. The percent winners today, McDonald's and Disney, uh, turning in 1.4 and 1.3 percent respectively. Uh, Pfizer had been a percent loser from the three to three month, three day to one month look back periods, but today actually gained 0.5 along with Merck, um, so that may be the XLPs of the world, the consumer staples defensive plays, starting to play catch up again. Uh, Disney has been very strong by any measure uh, between one days and ten days of outperformance, and then if you look over under the tortoise NDX, all these that are highlighted in green are things that closed above the look back period that uh, that's highlighted. So this breakout move in Disney today uh, was almost 20% of its 10-day channel, the width of its 10-day channel. So that is a decisive move, a decisive breakout. And now you can see McDonald's closed 30% higher than the width of its 10-day channel over the last 10 days. So both of those are deserving of study, and it would not be surprising to see momentum follow-throughs on evidence of such a uh, powerful breakout move. I'll be looking at those charts later tonight myself to see if I can frame them for a momentum trade. By the same token, uh, Walmart, whoops, excuse me, Walmart uh, has the one day, uh, three day NDX at minus one. That means it closed lower than its three day range by a, by a fraction. So not, not a really significant move. But it's interesting to note that Walmart, which had been a winner uh, in the last six months of last year, has not been keeping pace with this bull market. So some weakness in the, um, uh, among the retailer. Same chart looking at the ETF 30. <coughs> Excuse me. There's this channeling signal for TLT, uh, Max Payne candidates, VIX, and natural gas. Uh, Max Payne range compression, uh, uh, number one, uh, VIX, that means it has lost the most and also had the smallest uh, daily range today relative to the rest of the peer group. It's uh, um, auto framer reward to risk ratio is 6.3. That means if you could buy it a nickel above today's high using today's low minus a nickel as the initial stop and then it went on to test the 10-day high, it would give you a 6R trade. Um, Long-term treasuries have a 3.0 uh, 3 reward to risk. I'm going to back up a chart and uh, we'll see Procter & Gamble is a 2.2. That's the only member of the Dow that tests out on an auto framer basis. No patterns, just on a simple trade location and uh, reward to risk ratio. But those are charts of interest. You can see based on the number of uh, ETFs that, it, that have fired green over here under the Tortoise NDX, uh, almost half of those, uh, basically all the ones showing green, uh, closed much higher than their look back period. Japan turned in an exceptional day today uh, as well. So uh, the biggest breakout, consumer discretionary uh, in Japan, um, both turned in really good moves. Energy sector has been doing very well. Um, even though that has been oversold, but now is, is fully valued. Taking a look at the, uh, the frog list, at the top you can so see the ones that are of interest. Uh, all these that I've highlighted are ones where the frog quality number is greater than three, meaning that there's a three to uh, uh, a two to one reward to risk ratio waiting somewhere during the day on a statistically based move. Uh, strongest still being Disney technology. Uh, Disney really deserves our attention as a strong uh, frog candidate, and the fact that it had such an enormous breakout today and was a percent winner. Uh, if the market is strong tomorrow, it would not surprise to see Disney uh, continuing its momentum. 
so it'll be on my short list to study. Take a look at the fail stat. That's just a statistical description of how far on average these symbols, the 30 Dow and then the 30 large ETFs, how far they fall from the open to the low of the day on average. Uh, just for reference, since I trade IWM a lot, um, its average is uh, 95 cents. So from the open, if it moves down 95 cents and then starts finding support and reverse to hook up, uh, then I'll be on it uh, using a morning hook strategy. And because that has worked 14 out of 15 times in the last 30 days, uh, that will be a very important strategy to be prepared for tomorrow. Looking at the signal to noise ratio, this identifies the strongest trending uh, stocks and ETFs compared to their peers. Uh, Silver, Bank of America, the VIX, McDonald's. So McDonald's, again, it was a big breakout mover today, a strength leader. Uh, it tends to be very trendy intraday, very stable trends intraday. So if we see McDonald's starting to move, that tells you that could be a good one to get on and just ride, ride the train. <clears throat> the ones at the bottom of the list are exceptionally uh, volatile during the day that they you know, lots of pullbacks small real bodies so you should know how your symbol behaves um, looking at the uh, market mosaic market mosaic additional indicators the regression line r squared is still 0.93 uh, powerful move up today closed at a new 10-day high very little volatility in the channel. Um, you can see that uh, it's uh, the slope of that regression line has already moved more than one standard deviation away from average. So we are at extreme overbought conditions. Um, this is a market that is uh, uh, has resisted all sell-offs here lately. Only one in the last 30 days of any significance. Um, but just be mindful of the fact that there's a lot of profits to be preserved, and it can change. Uh, at a heartbeat. You can see the percent strength or percent stretch relative to the 200 day moving average has moved up also more than one standard deviation above. It's just about as healthy as it's been in, as at any time in the last six months uh, as it has dug itself out of that hole that it fell into in August. So that's been uh, quite a remarkable move. Uh, the remainder of the chart is just statistical background information so uh, I'm going to halt it there and uh, and see you in the chat room tomorrow. Good evening, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital Management with a review of the market health check for February 7th, 2012. Today we had an update day in the market which will be looked at favorably by uh, trend followers and swing traders. Uh, the purple line represents the swing high at 137 from last year. We're uh, within about a dollar or two of that right now. So this is the first real test of 137 since last year. The vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. The horizontal solid red lines represent support levels that have held in the past and would be the targets for any downside movement. The black line in the center of the channel is the regression line of the 30 day, uh, of the last 30 days, so 30 day regression line. The outer black lines represent the channel that's formed by the maximum excursion from that regression line during the look back period, which happened, uh, looks like about 21 December. So we have a very narrow uh, regression channel. The R squared coefficient is up around 0.95, so that regression line is a very good descriptor for this trend, so a strong bullish trend, narrow range. We have price is above the 10 period moving average, which is the solid green line, which is above the 50 period moving average, which is this thin red line that's emerging from underwater, which is the 200 day moving average. So this is the very definition of a bull market. Price better than the 10, better than the 50, better than the 200. The ADX now uh, is above 31 at uh, 31.30 so that's a very strongly trending bullish market with the green above the red in the plus DI uh, versus the minus DI. We have a bull quiet market. These red uh, 
blocks to the right represent a 5%, 10%, and 15% pullback levels from that swing high of 137. What we have in uh, Williams percent R is uh, a market that is still overbought. It can stay overbought for a long period of time, as we've seen in recent history. The entire run of this bull from about 20 uh, December onward has been mostly oversold, except for this one pullback uh, of last week. But even that was resolved to the upside this week. Uh, PPO is the percent price oscillator. It's the equivalent of MACD histogram that uses percentages rather than dollar figures, otherwise it's identical. The jaws have opened back up slightly to the upside, and that's a favorable sign for a potential next uh, upward swing. That means as we could get, if we can get through 137, we can get to 142, 143 uh, on this next surge. <coughs> the uh, bottom indicator is the slope of the 30-day regression line shown as a time series. Uh, it's starting to hook back up. Uh, and that's that's very favorable. That means the this little pullback can be discounted, and it's starting to move up. So in sum, we have a bull quiet market that is firing on all cylinders. It's coming close to an important resistance level at 137. Hesitation at 137 would be absolutely normal. If it does hesitate, then a test of the bottom of the regression channel, uh, which is also a 5% pullback, would be absolutely normal. And that's a pull back to about 131 in SPY. And so that would be a, uh, a $4 move. Uh, that's a 10%, um, that's about a 3% pullback from where we currently are. So that would be still within the realm of noise. So you have to account for that kind of a move uh, if it's on the downside. Now, if it gets through there, the next support level would be at 130. If 130 fails, it's down to 126 to the next support level near the 50-period moving average, then a 10% pullback to the uh, boundary of the 200-day moving average, which would be the end of the bull uh, as we know it. Uh, so that's that's what we're working with here, a strong bull beginning to emerge. Uh, 137 is the real test. I think it gets tested tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. Uh, is it going to knock once, twice, or blow right through it? We'll see tomorrow. Uh, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. Keep your risk measured and your powder dry. <laughs>